just realized my mic was off. There's another way to write that, and it's using this notation. I know that sometimes when people use this notation, they don't put the x, they just put square bracket, negative 5 comma 3 square bracket. Can somebody tell me why the brackets are square? Go ahead, Ian. Turns out, no. Turns out it's not because it's not a coordinate. And by the way, I do want to address what Ian just said. Because it's not an ordered pair, an x comma y, I think it's very important that you put this x with the colon there. That's what's telling us it's not a coordinate. But sometimes we will have a domain or range written this way, and the brackets will be round. Arden, do you remember? Right, it contains the end point that it can be equal to. So, you know, this doesn't apply here, but if I had a domain of numbers that was negative 5 is less than x, which is less than 3, so for some reason, and I suppose I can change this to show it to you, for some reason, instead of having this point, what you had was this situation where the point is not part of the function, then you would include round brackets. Okay. And actually the way this is drawn right now, this would be negative 5 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 3, which would be written as this. So the round brackets indicate that it cannot be equal to that number. That number is not part of the domain or the range. The square brackets indicate that it is. So that's why we have square brackets around that. Um, the range, well we can look over here on the right hand screen at the range. The range is the values of y and the lowest value of y is 2 and the largest value of y is 4. Don't look at the, at the initial value of y and the final value of y. It doesn't matter what the final value of y is. What matters is what the biggest value of y is. So we can put 2 to 4 here. And again, you can write this in the other notation if you like. So what I would like everybody to do is take a minute and write out the domain of g of x. And it's negative 1 to 7. So I want to pause there, and I know that many of you would want to just finish this off because you get it. But are we in agreement that it's negative 1 to 7 for the domain of g of x? Okay. How many of you, by a show of hands, got that by looking at the graph? Did anybody get it in a different way? This is the important idea that I want to drive home right now. We said that to go from f of x to g of x, you shift it four units to the right, which means every x coordinate increases by four. And if I take negative five and add four to it, guess what it becomes? It becomes negative one. And if I take three and add four to it, it becomes seven. So what's happening is we're taking the horizontal change and adding it to x to find the new x. Well, let's try that with the range without looking at the graph. If the lowest value of y was 2 in the original function, and correct me if I'm wrong, it shifted 9 units down, then the new lowest value of y should be 9 units less than the old one. So if I take 2 and subtract 9, I get negative 7. 
And the same should be true for the maximum value of y. If it was peaking at 4 and I shift at 9 down, it will peak at 9 less, which is negative 5. So 2 minus 9 gives me negative 7. 4 minus 9 gives me negative 5. We have to take this step into the abstract as opposed to the concrete where we look at the graph because you might not actually be given numbers in a problem. It might be an algebraic expression. Okay. Um, and then we can write the range of g of x that way as well. Does anybody have any questions? Go ahead, Ian. What I'm saying is this. If you know, if you know that the horizontal translation, and it's going to get more complicated than what I'm going to show you, but you know that the horizontal translation is six units to the left, okay? And I tell you that the domain of the original function is a comma b you should be able to write out what the domain of the new function is. And the domain of the new function or the transformed function would be a minus 6 comma b minus 6. So you don't even have a graph to look at. But what I'm telling you with this statement is that the smallest value of x was a and we shift everything six to the right, or six to the left, rather. So if the smallest value was a, and I move everything six to the left, then the new smallest value would be a minus six. Hmm? No, it could be any, I could, I could have put, uh, and you haven't had me as a teacher before, so many of you have, and you've seen this before. I could have said that the domain is kitten comma puppy. And then the thing I would say to my students, and then you're going to hear it from me many times, math is just squiggles on paper. I mean, they mean things, right? But they're just marks that we put on paper. It's not always going to be A comma B. It could be anything. And if this were the original domain that I have written in green, the new domain would be kitten minus 6 comma puppy minus 6. This is what I mean when I say we have to one, be able to be more abstract, and two, be more adaptable, not just look at, for example, is it always A and B? No, it could be anything. No matter how many different things you think it could be, it could be something else. Have I answered your question? Perfect. All right. Uh, mapping is a word that we use in this unit and course to describe a specific change. So for example, negative 5 comma 2, which is this point right here, turns into this point. I call this A prime down here the sister point to A. There's a connection between the two. Uh, some teachers will say this is the parent and this is the daughter. They're just words. The bottom line is negative 5 comma 2 becomes negative 1 comma negative 7. These things that we're writing here are ordered pairs. They're not domains and ranges and anything. It's an x comma y. Uh, 3 comma 3, you can look at where 3 comma 3 is. That's point E. And you can see what it becomes. It becomes 7 comma negative 6. And this is, the, what we're doing here is not really a Math 30 question. I wouldn't ask you this specifically on an exam. It's too simple. It's learning about what mapping is. Negative 1, uh, comma 4 becomes 3, comma negative 5. Just double check that. Negative 1, 4 becomes uh, 3, comma negative 5. So again, did we need to look at the graphs to write out those ordered pairs 
when we already knew that these are the changes that happened? Well, no, because if it shifts four to the right, every x coordinate increases by four. And if it shifts nine down, every y coordinate decreases by nine. And that means the mapping for any point is x comma y maps to x plus four comma y minus nine. And that's, that's how I was getting this one, three comma negative five. I added four to negative one and I took nine away from four. So any questions with the mapping? All right, so now we have to introduce the terminology. And I'll let you know right now, you're not going to end up with like a half hour to work on this stuff today. I want to make sure we do this first thing right. You're probably going to end up with about 10 minutes of practice time. But if I've done my job well, that's really all you need. It will become obvious. So when an original function y equals f of x undergoes a vertical translation, we change the function. I see that I've got a typing mistake there. We change the function spelling to y minus k equals f of x. Notice that y minus k equals f of x could be written and probably will be written as y equals f of x plus k. We'll, we'll get to what that k is in a second, but this thing where we're saying y minus k equals f of x is better if we add k to both sides of that equation because we like functions to be written as y equals. And instead of writing y equals f of x plus k, we very often write g of x equals f of x plus k. So this is starting to get confusing here, and it doesn't need to be. All I am saying, everybody, is that this is the original function. and that this is the transformed function. That's all I'm saying. We're going from f of x to g of x. And how are we doing that? We're taking f of x and adding a number. We're adding k to f of x. And the result is a vertical translation. To how many of you is it obvious that this k is q at this point in time? from last year. A few people. Okay. When an original function, f of x, undergoes a horizontal translation, the equation of the function is changed to y equals f of x minus h. Now this is the thing that gets confusing. What does f of x minus h mean? It means that in f of x, every place there's an x, you write x minus h. And if you struggle with anything over the next couple or three lessons, it's going to be this whole function notation thing. And it should start to really come together tomorrow. And we often write that as g of x equals f of x minus h. So we're going from f of x to g of x. And how are we doing that? We're changing the x to x minus a number. And what's the result? The result is a horizontal translation. If you go from y equals f of x to y minus k equals f of x minus h, then there's a horizontal and a vertical translation. That's all. These two things don't have to happen separately. They can happen to the same function. And again, it's much better to write, I don't have it here, but it's probably better to write y equals to add that k to the other side, if you want. So. If you know h, you can tell me about the horizontal translation. You can tell me, does it move left or right, and how much? And if you know k, you can tell me about the vertical translation. This is the whole goal today. If you identify h and k, what does that do to the graph? Both h and k are referred to as parameters, and that word is going to be important throughout this course. And f of x can be any function. It could be x squared because that's a parabola and we know what it looks like. It could be anything. Do 
you have this image on your handout? Okay. Just a nice summary of everything I've said. So in example two are a variety of functions that undergo changes, and we're going to use those four examples in number two to learn about H and K. So let's look at A, and let's listen very carefully because there's a lot of information here. What we are saying is y equals x squared changes into y minus 3 equals x minus 4 squared. And I really hope that there is no problem in understanding why I'm saying these two things are the same. If I take the one that I've highlighted near the middle of the screen and I add the number 3 to both sides, which is what I can do to an equation, there's an equal sign, so it's an equation, I get the one on the right. And I hope everybody understands that the top line here is a specific function, but the line below it is just the general description of what we've learned. So y equals x squared is the same as y equals f of x, which means f of x is x squared. If I say in this example, what's f of x, you answer it's x squared. If I say in this example, what's f of x, you say it's the absolute value of x. In C, f of x is root x. f of x is sine of x. Now, we're going to answer these questions by using graphing technology. And I have, you, we don't need to spend time with the calculator. I have them up here. I hope my links aren't broken. There we go. This is y equals x squared. You can see it typed in the top right-hand corner of the screen. And if I plot the new function, you can see that the new function is identical in every respect, shape, size, direction of opening, everything, as the original, but everything has been shifted four to the right and three up. One second, Ian. So for example, this point is at 0 comma 0 on the original function. It becomes 4 comma 3 on the transformed function. I don't need to do that with all the points. You can see visually things have been shifted 4 to the right and 3 up. So uh, let me finish my thought here, Ian, and then I will get to your question. So the value, of, well, let's do the translation first. 4 units to the right. We are right now in learning mode. I can abbreviate. If you're writing a written response on an exam, you better not abbreviate. And the vertical translation is three units up. Please don't forget your question, Ian, but I want to finish off my main point here. Everybody, when you compare these two things, what is the value of H? And what is the value of k? And write those numbers in the blank. So what number would you put in for k right here so that it wasn't y minus k, but it became y minus 3? It's not a trick question. The answer is 3. You have to make k 3. Now, there's a little hiccup in what I need to talk about here, and I'm, I'm going to maybe try to avoid it, but if I can't, I'll address it. We'll address it sooner or later. What do I put with the x so that x minus h, what do I put for h so that x minus h becomes x minus 4? 4. Right? If I rub out this 4, and I or rub out this h, and I put a 4, then it's going to be x minus 4. So h is 4. Don't forget your question, Ian. But I have a question right now. Does anybody have any questions with getting h equals 4 and k equals 3 out of that comparison? OK, Ian, go ahead. Sorry? OK. So OK, here's the lesson. h is positive 4. The horizontal translation is four units in a positive direction to the right. That's, that's it. <laughs> K is positive three. The vertical translation is three units in a positive direction up. 
Same thing we did with parabolas last year, except we used P and Q. The mapping, we could either look at the graph that I've generated, or we could just say, this becomes 4 comma 3. And I'm going to cut to the chase here, because x comma y will always become x plus 4 comma y plus 3 in this example. Because you're adding 4 to x, and the reason you're adding 4 to x is you're shifting 4 units to the right. You're adding 3 to y because you're shifting 3 units up. And quite frankly, I don't care if you complete the mapping of these other points. We can add 4 to x and 3 to y. We can add 4 to x and 3 to y. This is the important thing right here. Any questions with 2a? Okay, what if we go from y equals the absolute value of x to y minus 4 equals the absolute value of x minus 2? So this time, before we look at the graphs, I would like everybody to fill in what you believe the value of h is and the value of k is. Before looking at the graphs, and you're doing that by comparing as knew that. It was my mistake. So what do you think is going to happen to this graph of the absolute value of x? If h is negative 2, and we learned that when h is positive 4, it shifts 4 in a positive direction, which is to the right, then we would suspect that this is going to shift the absolute value of x 2 units to the left. And by the way, I haven't really said it explicitly, well, I have. It's in your notes. H is horizontal. K is vertical, right? So we would expect this to be two units to the left or and four units up. And by the way, you know what the absolute value of x looks like. It's that v from Math 20. So let me show you the graphs now. There's the absolute value of x. Here's the absolute value of x plus 2 plus 4. 2 to the left and 4 up. And when I talk about abstract and generalities, you understand that we can't keep, we can't keep having to resort to looking at the graphs to answer these questions. We could, but it's time consuming. What's the mapping that occurs? Well, let's cut to the chase here x turns into x minus 2 because it's shifted 2 to the left. y turns into y plus 4. In other words, every x coordinate is decreased by 2, and every y coordinate is increased by 4. So could we do all this mapping? Well, let's take 2 away from 1. Let's add 4 to 1. Quite frankly, I don't care if you want to write in the actual numerical values for those points. Now, there's something else we haven't done, and we will. It also says to make a comparison here, and we will get back to that once we've done all four. I want you to take a look at this. I want you to fill in H, K, what you believe the horizontal translation is, what you believe the vertical translation is, and I also want you to write down what you think the mapping of x comma y is.
So the value of h is 3. Again, I'm a big fan of rearranging for y. So I like looking at this over here as opposed to what's to the left of it, although that will work as well. k is the number that's after everything. And since it says minus 5, k is negative 5. H is always responsible for a horizontal shift or translation. And since H is positive, my hypothesis is that it shifts in a positive horizontal direction, which is to the right. And it should be three units to the right. K is the parameter that's responsible for vertical translations. And since K is negative, my hypothesis is it shifts down and it's five units down, which would mean the mapping would be x plus 3, comma, y minus 5. And, and it's correct. Let me show it to you. There's y equals root x. Trust me, that's what y equals root x looks like. This is the square root this is the square root of x minus 3 and then minus 5. It shifts 3 to the right and 5 down. Go ahead, Arden. This? So are we talking about from here to here? Yeah. There's no typing mistake. Okay. Hang on a second, Ian. Let me ask you this question. What number would you have to put for k to turn y minus k into y plus 5? So that's why k is negative 5. If I put negative 5 here, I get, I get this function, correct? If I put negative 5 here, I get this function, correct? These two functions are the same, correct? Which means that this is correct and this is correct. What my advice to everybody would be is to pick either this line, uh, sorry, this column or this column. And I would even go so far as to say the last column is the best. Because we're going to see there's a formula of sorts on your formula sheet that you'll get later where it's y equals and not y minus k equals. Okay, have I answered your question? Okay. There's a reason why we talk about this middle column even though it's confusing. And I will get to that later, but I want to keep moving. Okay. Um, do the same thing here with D. Write in what you believe H and K are, what the mapping is, what the translations you believe are going to occur. And again, hand up and down once you've got it. Thank you, Reagan. Again, I'm not worried so much about the specific points for the mapping. When you compare x minus 30 to x minus h, h has to be negative 30. And I'm sure most of you have clued into the fact 
that when it's x plus a number, h is negative, and when it's x minus a number, h is positive. k is the number that's at the end when you've rearranged for y. And when we rearrange for y, we have minus 4 at the end. So if positive k is equal to negative 4, k is negative 4, which means that this graph, whatever y equals sine of x looks like, would be shifted 30 degrees to the left and 4 units down. So the mapping would be x minus 30 degrees, comma, y minus 4. To show these to you, that's y equals sine of x. It's a graph that we're going to become intimately familiar with in a trigonometry unit. And here is y equals sine of x minus 30 minus 4. You can see that this is scaled horizontally as 30 degrees every square or every tick or every mark. And when we take a look at this point here, it's at 90 degrees. And when we take a look at it here, it's at 60 degrees. So that point has been shifted 30 degrees to the left. You can also see that vertically that point was at 1, and now it's at negative 3. So vertically, it's been shifted 4 units down. So does anybody have any questions, general or otherwise, about A, B, C, or D? Go ahead, Ian. You're starting to dip your brain into the thing that I wanted to avoid until tomorrow. But I can address it now, and then we will address it again tomorrow. When we first did this, and you asked about C, but bear with me. When we first did this, I highlighted this middle portion, and I said, there's a hiccup in deciding what H is. I don't know if you remember me saying that. And then I said, I want everybody to compare this to this. And you'll notice that I was very crafty in distracting you away from the squared. I didn't want you thinking of the squared. Similarly, when we look at the value of h here, I didn't want you looking at the absolute value. And when you find the value of h here, I didn't want you worrying about the square root, which is what you're starting to do. And this is not just a, a great question. It's an important question for all of us. And here, I distracted you away from the fact that it was sine. I said, just look at what's inside. So now I'm going to ask the question that I will ask again tomorrow. And when we get to the answer to this question, I think it will answer yours. How come there's no squared on this? It's not an error. There should not be a squared on that. And my question is, why don't we write squared on that x minus h? And why don't we write absolute value around this x minus h? And why don't we put square root of x minus h? And I don't know if anybody knows the answer to this question. Why don't we put sine of x minus h? Go ahead, Ian. That's right. If you look at this, I'll, I'll, go, to the, I'll go back to the squared one. Why don't we put squared around the x minus h? The answer is it's already there. Because f, because f means square, right? f of x means square the input. Why don't we put absolute value around this x minus h? Well, we do, because this f means absolute value. So in answer to your question, Ian, we only look at what happens to x in deciding the horizontal translation. We don't look at the actual function that is then performed on x minus h. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, there's one more thing we have to talk about here, and I'm not going to write it down. I don't think you need to. 
It says in all of these, compare the replacements that were made in the original equation to the mapping. And I want you to notice something. That when we changed y to y minus 3, the mapping becomes y plus 3. When we change x to x minus 4, the mapping becomes x plus 4. It's opposite. This is why, Arden, we put this middle column in so that we can make that connection. We changed y to y minus 4, y increased by 4. We changed x to x plus 2, x decreased by 2. So just in the back of your head, make a mental note that what happens in the equation today is the opposite of what happens to the graph. And it's true for all of them. Cut to the chase here with d. x becomes x plus 30 in the equation. On the graph, x turns into x minus 30. So up here, this is about the equation. Down below with the mapping, it's about the graph. All right, so that's the lesson. Here's the summary, and then we're going to burn through the rest of the examples, which are really just really simple if you understand the summary. When you go from f of x to y equals f of x minus h plus k, see what I've done there? I put the k over on the other side. I don't like writing y minus k. But at the risk of dragging things out too long, you understand when the function is written in this form that h is the opposite of the number you see, but k is not the opposite of the number you see. So if I had that, h is negative 8 and k is positive 7 because we've already moved the k over. So the horizontal translation is left if h is negative and right if h is positive. The amount is just the absolute value of h. So I, I, this statement here, the absolute value of h, has nothing to do with this function. I'm just saying, I'll remind you from math 20, the absolute value of a number is the number without the negative. You remember that? So if h is negative 5, the shift is 5. That's all I'm saying. We don't include the negative when we talk about the translation. The negative turns into the word left. Vertical translation is down if k is negative and up if k is positive, and the amount is equal to however big the number k is. That's it. That's what we've spent the last 45 minutes on. So I want everybody to look at this. I want you to write down what h is equal to. I want you to write down what k is equal to. We're going from f of x to g of x. So in order to go from f of x to g of x, it looks like I have to shift it four units to the left. And then in order to go from f of x to g of x, negative 3 and uh, 6, 1, 2, 3, better just double check here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so 9 down. So what's the equation of this function? This is what I mean when I say 
you don't even have an equation for the original function. But what you can do is write that the new function is y equals f of x plus 4 minus 9. We're using this, everybody, as a template and putting in what x and y are equal to to get the new function. So when we take a look at B, B is a multiple choice question, and now we're starting to get into problems that could be actually on an exam. Would probably have the four choices. Make sure my counting was right here. Yeah. Would probably have those four choices. The horizontal shift or the horizontal change, it's from 5 to negative 25. That's a change of 30. So H has something to do with the number 30. The vertical change has something to do with 10 because every point on the original function vertically is 10 away from every corresponding point on the transform function. You just have to decide which it is. And since the original function is shifted 30 to the right, that tells me that it is neither A nor B because x minus 30 tells me h is positive 30, which means it shifts to the right. Capiche on that? It's Italian for do you understand? OK. Uh, since the original function is lower than the new function, the original function must be shifted up 10, which means k is 10, so the correct answer would be c. Any questions with that example? Go ahead, Ian. No. Never apologize. This is the, what I mentioned already, that you'll be walking along, strolling along, and you'll stumble. You'll look at it, and you'll start to second guess yourself. And I do it all the time. You'll think, oh, wait a minute. No, just a second. Is that right? It happens. OK, let's take a look at another one. For each of the following, describe the transformations. Let me ask you something, though. Without talking about H and K, how many of you, I'm going to start with B, how many of you know that this will be shifted 5 to the left and 7 up? So you don't necessarily have to write out what H and K are. If I see X plus 5, then I know it's a shift in the negative direction. If I see plus 7 at the end, I know it's a shift of 7 up. And then I suppose I could say h must be negative 5 and k must be 7. But I know there are some people that will write out what h and k are first to figure out what the translations are. That's not me. But, you know, so for example, a person here would say h is 2 and k is negative 10. Now, let's talk about this k being negative 10. How many of you see it's negative 10, first of all? Do you see it's negative 10 because if you move the 10 over, it becomes minus 10? Probably. If you don't, then Arden, that's what we were talking about. You compare y minus k to y plus 10. Bottom line. This is a shift of two units to the right, and that's a 10, 10 units down. It, it's this simple idea with a million different masks on how I can ask you the questions. 
Number five, a transform function has the equation of y equals f of x minus 4 and then minus 6. The original function contains the point 2 comma negative 7. The new function, which is f of x minus 4 minus 6, will contain what point? What do those numbers become when we transform the original function? Well, the mapping is x comma y turns into x plus 4 comma y minus 6. Because if it's x minus 4, it shifts 4 to the right because h is 4. And since it's minus 6 at the end, that tells us that k is negative 6, so it shifts down 6. You simply need to add 4 to the x-coordinate and take 6 away from the y-coordinate. So the answer is going to be 6, comma, negative 13. You know, so when I say to you, you know, five-minute quiz tomorrow, this is what I'm talking about. It would be multiple choice, probably. Multiple choice question, which really is a 10-second thing. You, you read the question in 10 seconds. You think about it for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 second thing. It's not a big deal as long as you know the rules. And the rules were found by looking at specific examples. But we're no longer going to look at specific examples. We have to be more abstract. Uh, six, what's the domain and range of a transform function? The original function, f, is given there. The transformed function is f of x minus 9 minus 17. You'll notice, I hope, and appreciate that I gave you numbers and such a small graph that you replotting the transformed graph is kind of a dead end, right? You don't have room to draw it. So what we do need to understand is that with this particular transformation, that's the mapping. Now again, I'm getting that by looking at this function. And I'm not, honestly everybody, I'm not saying in my head h is this and k is that. I'm just, it's a pattern. I see x minus 9, it shifts 9 to the right. I see minus 17 at the end, it shifts 17 down. If you like, That's the case, which means one final note before we finish this question. This is an interesting thing. That's always true for mapping. You might want to think about that a little bit. That x will always turn to x plus h, and y will always turn into y plus k. Because if h is negative, then we're going to take it away from x. And if h is positive, we're going to add it to x. Anyway, the original domain is negative 2 to 4. That's the original domain on f. The original range is negative 3 to 3. That's, again, that's on f. You just double check that. Negative 2 to 4 for x and negative 3 to 3 for y. Okay, go ahead, Ian. I would have to erase the one negative there. Y, F of X is the original. Well, this is the original graph. No. This is not the original. This is the original. 
it says a function is shown, and it says the function is f of x. So you see an f there. This is f of x. It says, what's the domain and range of this function? This function is an altered version of f of x. It's transforming f of x into this new thing. It could be. I could do this. You, you, we're going to have to learn to be adaptable here. I could say g of x equals f of x minus 9, minus 17. This is the original function on the left. This is the transformed function on the right. Well, that makes sense. I'm not sure I really said much to answer your question, but is it clear now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave it there. So if the original domain is negative 2 to 4, and we know either by looking at mapping, looking at h, or just looking at the fact that it's x minus 9, we know things get shifted 9 to the right, then each of these two x values will grow by 9. If the smallest value was negative 2 and we shift everything 9 to the right, then correct me if I'm wrong, negative 2 plus 9 is 7. And the biggest value of x was 4, and we shift every x coordinate 9 to the right, this will be 13, because 4 plus 9 is 13. This is for domain. I don't know that we can get away with writing it this way. I think the x should probably be written first, but that doesn't matter. For the range, if the smallest value of y was negative 3 and we're shifting everything in a negative direction 17, then if I take negative 3 and take 17 away from it to get negative 20, that will be the minimum value of the new function. And if the highest value of y was 3 and I take 17 away from it, how is my arithmetic? Negative 14? Okay. And this is your range. So, you know, in the end, everybody, where is it? Did I delete it? No. In the end, this is, this is the lesson. But again, be aware that you are going to stumble. You'll, you'll say, oh, no, I got this. And then you'll look and you'll go, wait a minute, what, what happened there? Practice problems, the most important ones are the multiple choice and numerical response questions in your unit handout, but there's additional practice on page 12 of your text, one to three, one and three. Generally speaking, I'm not going to be checking homework on a daily basis. If I suspect that somebody doesn't really understand stuff, I might ask to see their work. But this is why at this level I call this practice. It's not homework, it's practice. You're responsible for your own learning here. You're responsible to know what you can do. So if you need more practice, there's always more. Okay. So yeah, you don't have a lot of time, uh, about 10 minutes. But see if you can get through those multiple choice questions. I will tell you right now that there are no mistakes in the multiple choice question answer keys. Um, everybody when you do question two, many of you will get it wrong and you will second guess yourself. You'll think, man, I, I totally don't understand. When you get an exam question in Math 30-1 that you think is easy, my advice is think again because so many of them have twists to them.